because this isn't a I'm an expert, I know all. This is also a learning. It is a beautiful spring day and I have been working all day on outside projects for cleaning, gardening, you name it, I've been running around like a crazy person. But I did film me cleaning a moldy mildew patio furniture that I actually got for free from my neighbors the other day. So that was cool. All I had to do was clean it off. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. And I did break it into two halves and I tried um, a Clorox bleach and I also tried Barkeeper's Friend. And you will see in the video how both of them resulted. And then I ended up saying goodbye to one and yes to the other and so let's get started so here we have a patio bench um, it's a little bit bigger than a chair and it has mold and mildew on it and we are going to make it look like this isn't that a lot better so stick with me because I'm just gonna show you how and it's kind of chaotic because I was trying two things but I will break down how I do it so first of all, if you have a chair and it's not mold and mildew, you don't need to use bleach to clean it. I would use just uh, dish soap and water and do it that way. However, if you've got mold and mildew and wanna get that um, off of the chair, which you do, then this is what I would suggest and that is Clorox bleach, which I had just sprayed all over the chair and now I'm just feeling it to kind of make sure it's working and kind of feeding it into it, making it sure it's all over. Because if you spray things and they drip, sometimes Clorox bleach can dye the drip stains. So you do kind of want to spread it out. Then on the other side, I tried by, I tried Barkeeper's Friend. Um, just because I've been playing around with this product, it's kind of the product of the month that I've been working with. But I am just rubbing it in and like kind of um, getting it all over, making a paste. So with either one of these, they worked great but I would definitely go with the bleach. It worked a lot better and you can see in this video, I do switch over, I rinse all of this off on the left hand side, the barkeeper's friend, and move over to the right hand side. And when you spray on your bleach, kind of rub it throughout or you spray it on really well and not a lot if you can help it. So after rubbing on all of the Clorox bleach or spraying it down, I would let it sit. And I would let it sit for about 10 minutes. A little longer or a little shorter would be okay. But if you go too long, it can eat away. And if you go too short, it might not do its job. So actually what I would really suggest is just read the label. In my experience, everything you need to know is on the back of the bottle most of the time. So after letting it sit, I just go and I take a bucket of Dawn dish soap and water and I just start cleaning the whole entire bench off. And see, here's when I got rid of the barkeeper's friend and sprayed the other side and let it sit. And really, it didn't take very long for it to do its job. So honestly, I don't even think you would need to sit all that long. Just eyeball it. Go check it out. Do wear gloves like I am doing. You do not want to mess with bleach and not protect yourself. I also have old clothes there that are my cleaning clothes. And I have some cleaning clothes that are just everyday cleaning clothes. And then I have like tough job cleaning clothes. And I also have if I need bleach cleaning clothes because bleach will leave stains on your clothes and it can destroy them. So that is something you want to keep in mind when you're working with bleach. Um, and I'm also outside, very well vented area. And I have my bench on the, the cement was something that we didn't worry about it hurting. And I also have it where the water's dripping down into the street and not into anything that would get destroyed. So bleach is not something I typically like to work with. It's actually something I prefer not to work with. But in this case, it was the best way to get that mold and mildew off your patio furniture and you can do it outside. Now I do use a bucket and I did that because I thought it would be a really good way to show you if you don't have a hose or a power washer. I have both, but I did want to show the hardest way because I think if you can see it with a bucket, you can understand how to do it with a hose or a power washer. I'd actually probably just use a hose for this. So we're rinsing everything off after you scrub every inch of it back front up in the grooves and then rinse it all off and then you can let it air dry. However, I really like to dry things off and wipe them down because with that towel I was able to remove any leaves, dirt, things like that that didn't get pushed off when you were cleaning it and it can get the watermarks. 
and it just makes it look better. Only for this one time clean, I feel like I did all that work. I want to finish strong. I want it to be as perfect as I can get it, at least for a moment. And then I do go, see in those grooves there, that's where a lot of things will get stuck. So you do just take the towel and kind of remove everything and dry everything. And then the bottom of the pinch, that is a spot to clean off probably frequently because that's where spiders and spider webs and eggs all sit. So if you can get under there, then you don't have to worry about spiders being on the bench when you go to sit down. But don't forget that spot, wipe it all down, and voila. Oh, I can't wait to use this this summer. Jaden's really excited about it too. That's my son. Look at that. Ta-da!